I'm Aaron James. And I'm Wesley Bertha, and this is Gen 2, your source for all things video game and tech related. Let's start things off with this week's up and coming releases. You can look forward to seeing these titles and many more released throughout the month on your favorite platforms. The Game Award is still recovering from the launch of Kingdom Hearts 3 last week, so there aren't many exciting new titles out this week. The most recognizable name on this week's list is Yokai Watch 3 for the 3DS on February 8th. This entry features the new American Yokai, as well as a zombie night, where you must help the town escape from the Walking Dead. Next up is Ape Out for the PC and Nintendo Switch. This game has been lovingly given the subtitle Harambe's Revenge by most of the internet. In this game, you play as an ape that has escaped, and you're out on the run. You have to take out any and all that try to stop you, including zookeepers, cops, and sailors. Next, we have Spike Volleyball for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. The title pretty much says it all for this game. You play volleyball. No surprises here. The winner for most radical name this week goes to Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game 2 for the PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. This game is perfect for those who want to hop on a bike and sling some dirt, but can't because it's a little too cold outside right now. Finishing out this week's list is God Eater 3 for the PS4 and PC. This game features some big monsters and some even bigger weapons to use on your supersized foes. <laughs> These games and many more will be releasing throughout the month, so be sure to keep a lookout for them. Up next, check out Game Breakers with Wes. So we're back, and now I'm about to play right now, so I got the teams together. I'm with Dylan as well, so we're gonna get this going. Uh, I'm not quite sure which team I have. I'm gonna choose like teams right now. Uh, I don't know, Rangers or whatever, it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, okay, so yeah, I'm gonna try this out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> right. okay. Oh, that's the that's oh, money. <laughs> Already. Oh, yeah. Let's start this game. Isn't that? Alright, let's see. Get right. back, James. Do what you do. Hmm. Oh, jeez. How did you. Oh, my. Oh. Oh yeah, good boy. Kim, <sighs> Flash. Okay. Uh, come on. Uh, uh, street ball. So I'm love. You just. Ah, <clears throat> uh, dang it. Oh yeah. This might be a long game. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. Oh, Joe. We have. Oh, 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 that Kyrie. Behind us. That's the opposite of what you've been doing. Step back. Facts. <laughs> that man has been on. Oh my gosh, he's been on the scoring spree. I mean, honestly, last year looking at him, could you imagine him being in the all, being a starter in the All Star game last year? Smash, <laughs> got him. Step back. Ah, come here, coach. Yeah, uh, come on, step, bro. Guard's cold, so it's working somewhere. Oh, whoa, that might go away. Oh my God. Oh, okay, match. Oh yeah, we on that. Bro, bro. Clear. Oh yeah. Oh, hey, hey. let's go. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, I'm jumping. I'm jumping. Oh, my gosh. That's a free throw of mine. Well, he doesn't make those. But he made that one. Let's go. <laughs> for LeBron. Maybe it's the weather in Los Angeles. <laughs> I don't know. But it's not looking good for LeBron. Free throw wise. It's not looking Oh, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a pretty close game. <laughs> I have been this to the 14 12. I'm up by two. And LeBron has to take over. Step back. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Whoa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, give me that. I don't know. Look at that. Oh, that's a good step back. You better make that. Oh. Yeah. Ah. The ah. disrespect for your step back. Uh-oh. Oh. 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 Wow. Two touch windmill. Oh, yeah, they sleep. Oh, yeah. Good D. Dang. Good D, Kimba. Uh-oh. Okay. Bad D, Kimba. You, you got to get back. Kimba, you, 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 you got to get that's back. Awesome. Oh, I see you. Oh man. Woo! Yeah! Double clutch. Double clutch, double clutch game reverse. Game. game point for the Rangers, aka Team LeBron. Oh! Oh! Oh yeah. Game point. Kawhi. Oh, flashy pass. Into MP for the game winning shot! Alright, so I'm gonna let uh, voiceover Wesley take over from here, so go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. And thank you guys for tuning in to this week's edition of Game Breakers. Next week, we'll be playing UFC 3 in a preview of Anderson Silva versus Israel Adesanya. See you next week. Hey gamers, last week DICE released the much needed second January patch for Battlefield 5. The patch includes practice range improvements and features, updates for the Panzerstorm map, soldier fixes and tweaks, vehicle changes, and overall quality of life improvements for the game. 
As a Battlefield fanboy, I can say it's finally starting to look like a finished game. Thank God. In the first January patch, DICE made footstep audio a bit too loud. This has now been tweaked so that it is somewhere in between not loud enough to hear and oh my god I can literally see the sound of players' footsteps on the other side of the map. Vaulting has been further improved so that player models will more easily navigate over small objects like barrels and debris. Players should no longer have to vault when attempting to run upstairs either. You can now vault more efficiently too. Jumping from one ledge to the next is not as slow or heavy and has been made to feel smooth and fluid. If you fall from a decent height you can catch yourself by holding the jump button or key to save yourself from some fall damage. But keep in mind this animation will be much slower and heavy feeling, so pick your ledges carefully. Bipods have been a source of frustration leading up to this patch, especially for MMGs since you can't aim down the sights unless the bipod is deployed. Before the patch, bipods would have various issues deploying and undeploying. This made it very difficult to fire at moving targets. Overall, it seems like DICE has improved the stickiness of the bipod so that it allows the player a wider range of motion when in use. There are still some areas where the issue seems to appear, but given the amount of ledges and objects in the game paired with destruction, it is certainly not an easy fix, so I'll take what I can get for now. Panzerstorm Map's F point has seen some significant changes to make the objective area more infantry friendly. Though the map is more vehicle focused, DICE has tried to make it more infantry friendly as a whole by adding more ditches, mounds, and layering multiple areas with soft cover so that infantry players have more options for dealing with those vehicles. I gotta say, Panzerstorm definitely needs these changes. The map is incredibly large and was mostly just open fields. The map is based on the initial German blitzkrieg into the French countryside. However, it didn't necessarily make for much fun in game. It was a map I avoided at all cost. I'm interested to see if it plays any different. Battlefield 5 has certainly been a roller coaster of issues since before launch. From the reveal trailer backlash, historical accuracy controversies, and basically Electronic Arts releasing a clearly unfinished product, this game and franchise has taken a hit. But as we see more and more in the games industry today, developers continue to work on their games post-launch into the next release. I wish we could have gotten a finished product first so that content additions would take priority over bug fixes and quality of life improvements, but this is EA after all. Still, I'm excited to see where this game goes in the future. In just the month of January, it has received two patches that, in all honesty, addressed a lot of issues. Though it has introduced new issues as well, like updates normally do, I know DICE has the talent to make this one of the best Battlefield games in the franchise. I just can't wait to see new content drops and where in World War II they take us next. For more gaming updates just like this, keep it right here on Gen 2 and KNWT Channel 8. Hello, and welcome to Aaron's Analysis, where I give my thoughts on some of the games I've been playing. This week, we're going to be looking at Hitman 2, a stealth game with tons of replayability. Although the story and cutscenes appear to have been shorted due to the financial strain IO Interactive went through to purchase the Hitman IP from Square Enix, the core of Hitman is more uncompromising than ever. Where Hitman 2016 had caused divisiveness in perception of the new design philosophy, Hitman 2 fills itself out to unquestionably be the definitive Hitman experience. At its core, Hitman 2 retains a mildly similar engine to its predecessor, but the real underlying changes add a whole new depth to the challenge of the game. Hiding in foliage presents a whole new layer of strategy, while the previously overpowered instinct has had many of its properties toned down to keep it viable while keeping it from being a source of near omnipotence. Enemies do indeed respond in real time to mirror reflections, and minor AI variation has been implemented to prevent certain easier assassination methods from being foolproof. With keeping custom contract creation with both the new locations and the legacy locations from the first game, Along with the addition of a multiplayer ghost mode and a co-op sniper assassin mode, Hitman 2 is one of the most content-full stealth games I've ever played, especially with the decision to shy away from the episodic content of the first game. The online-only requirement and elusive targets may scare some people away, but some think the previous game was actually made better by the inclusion of these community systems. Surprisingly for a game which has been fully integrated with a previous two-year-old game, the network functions are surprisingly robust and load times are infinitely improved. If you were never a fan of Hitman or stealth games at their core, then this game will probably not sway your decision any more than the last game, but for fans of the genre, it may be lacking in story, but story was never the franchise's real strength. For a game that appears to just be more of a good thing, it's worth noting that Hitman 2 pulls off a major feat by feeling strongly familiar yet completely different. While the game is essentially Hitman Season 2, the entire experience has been completely overhauled from the ground up, and if you include the content of the Legacy Pack, new players will have two whole games worth of completely overhauled progression-based stealth gameplay, and a whole host of endlessly replayable community and multiplayer functions entirely separate from the main game. Largely, each mission plays out in a similar fashion. You're briefed on one or more targets in the game stages, each of which is large, bustling, and consists of varied locales based on the real world. 
Then you enter the level, explore, plan, and carry out a kill before escaping. But that description does no justice to the improvisational joy of the Hitman experience. Each mission is full of routes to your objective, planned or not, involving silly disguises and gadgets, and truly surprising amounts of rat poison. It's like an elaborate murder puzzle box, putting out values of mayhem for any of the unlikely combinations the player can come up with. Unlike most stealth games, this is social stealth. As much about fooling the people around you with the impersonation and distractions as it is about simply avoiding sight lines and taking out sentries. The pleasure is in the drama you cause, and the wicked delight of having gotten away with it. What Hitman 2 adds to that formula, aside from a handful of massive, fantastic new levels to play around in, is a clarity to the systems that make it easier for new players to jump in and feel good, even when they're failing. Hiding places are more clearly marked, and players are better notified when they're hidden, which is essential for when a plan fails and you have to run away, improvise, and try again. Certain traditional stealth mechanics, like crouching and hiding in the bushes, have been reintroduced to the mix in a way that doesn't alter the action, but adds familiar means for players more familiar with, say, Metal Gear Solid's approach to remaining undiscovered. And on top of those refinements, Hitman 2 styles itself in a fashion designed to offer the player as much freedom in planning and carrying out missions as possible. Each successful run opens up more options for equipment and spawn locations, and missions are playable in any order regardless of the story. I think this game is one that I definitely have to recommend, I haven't been able to put it down, trying to get every single outcome I can on the assassinations. And thank you for listening to Aaron's analysis, next up we have Cody with Monkey Plays. What is going on guys? Welcome back to Monkey Plays. This time we're playing Fortnite. This series will be focused on me learning my new keybinds as well as getting used to playing computer Fortnite. I hope to improve my skill throughout this series and hopefully compete in tournament style pop-up cups which are found in the game. I hope you guys will enjoy the series so we're going to get right on into it. In this first episode I'll be learning to take control of my new keybinds and getting used to the general idea how to build without getting overwhelmed and spam building. For my keybinds, I think I've found some that have fit for me as I use shift for run, my harvesting tool as number one, my weapon slot one is my thumb mouse button two, my weapon slot two is my thumb mouse button one, my weapon slot three, four, and five are associating three, four, and five, my wall is Q, my floor is my left side mouse button, my stairs is tab, and my roof is B, as well as traps being T. I have my building edit to F, and that is all. For our first demonstration, I'm going to practice being shot and putting up a wall, and then a ramp after that. So in this demonstration, I'm going to be practicing my wall building as I'm being spammed by an unknown player from an unknown location. In this demonstration, I'm going to be showcasing the technique of tactical building when you see an enemy from afar. In my opinion, there are two ways to effectively defend yourself from enemy fire or if you're trying to hide real quick. The simple one by one with a flat on top or if you're low on materials and in a time crunch, you can run, crouch and place a pyramid on top of you.
All right, guys, this will do it for episode one of Monkey Plays Fortnite. In this episode, I talked about my keybinds I will be using, a couple of engagement building, as well as defensive or hiding building. Tune in next week where I get comfortable fighting and finding a right weapon for me. Up next, we have Dalton with Project Delta. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new, exciting first episode of the season for Project Delta. I'm Dalton Spies, and with me today is Andy. And here we are today. I've waited 13 years to play this game, and it's everything I could have ever wanted it to be. It's Kingdom Hearts, it's Sora, and there's Donald, and there's Goofy, and Hercules is here doing Herculean acts, and I'm just so happy that this exists, Andy. What? Do you like Kingdom Hearts, or am I am I the am I the Lone Ranger in this? You are not the Lone Ranger. I will be your Tonto. <laughs> Thank uh, goodness. It's it's uh, it's a great series. Um, a little confusing because oh, you know they uh, had yeah is, a little confusing. Yeah, a little, this is yeah this is the third in the main series. In the main but, series. But like DS games, I think some PSP. PSP like there's just uh, so many DS yeah. Game Boy Advance. Uh, Square Enix just really uh, likes. I think it's Disney likes their money. Disney is, <laughs> they do like their money as Sora's yeah. flying through the air with a, some burnt butt cheeks, but uh, well. <laughs> you know, this game is, it's great. And yeah. it's, I, I stayed up till midnight last night so I could play it. And then oh, I yeah. stayed up three hours more so I could play it some more. There was a fire alarm in the res hall and I was really just debating whether or not I should stay in and keep playing. But you know, fire safety comes first. So I, I walked out, but oh. so. <laughs> Andy, we talked about the story and how it's all just kind of convoluted yeah. and really just hard to grasp. Mm -hmm. So what what do you think is the cause of that? I, I think it's just different different people uh, taking a hold of the mm -hmm. storyline. Like I'm guessing that the same people who made the first two in this main, main line mm -hmm. are making this one, but then they had these offshoots that are like, hey, let's Let's add cards and let's add, you know, like... Oh, yeah. yeah Chain of Memories, the card game, <laughs> probably the worst game ever. Yeah. Uh, that's, of course, debatable, but uh, yeah. I debate for it being but Yeah, but, like, different different directors come in and, mm -hmm. and are like, hey, I want to try it this way. And, and obviously Disney's going to be like, yeah, of course, because they want the money. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, of course, the main director for this game and has been ever since the inception is uh, Tetsuya Nomura, mm -hmm. and he's... He does not only Kingdom Hearts, but obviously Kingdom Hearts, you know, it's it's a union. Half of it is Disney, mm -hmm. and Disney is fantastic, but yes. the other half of it is Final Fantasy, which is also just a series that I myself is, have always loved. And so the reason that this game took so long to come out was Final Fantasy 15 was originally like Final Fantasy versus 13, and then mm -hmm. it was scrapped multiple times, and eventually Final Fantasy 15 came out uh, within the past couple years, which gave Square Enix the green light to make this the priority. Yeah. So and, and 15 is really good too. So 15 like, is yeah, also really good. It is good. really good. But of course the main thing everybody really loves about these games is the uh, Disney World. So I want to yep. know what are some of your favorite Disney Worlds? Are we just sticking with just Disney or like any of the properties that they've own, like they own now? Uh, like, it, wanna... Any property that we've seen in a Kingdom Hearts game. Oh, I'm dying. So <laughs> thank you Donald. Donald cannot... <laughs> Donald cannot just, heal at all. He is he just, the he worst. He just ducks and covers. That's all yeah, he does. Yeah, ducks and covers. Yep. But no, in the in the series itself, um, I think the Little Mermaid was in there like once. The Little Mermaid is the worst. Oh well, it's the, I like swimming around. I, it, the the three dimension three dimensional fighting I'm not a fan of, but like just being in that world is kind of cool. Um, yeah, well. Uh, I'm sure you remember the best part of Kingdom Hearts 2, and by best I mean worst, is yeah. the Atlantis world where it's literally just a, like a musical the entire time. You don't even really fight anybody. It's just like a, a rhythm game inside of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> You're right. But, but the uh, Alice in Wonderland one, that was that, oh, yeah. that one's a pretty good one. Um, you know, I, It's been a while since I've played this series, mostly because, mm -hmm. you know, it's been, like you it's said, 13 so years. Long. Yeah, it's like... I don't, I, you know, it takes a while for for you to get through a game, so it's... Yeah. So, some of my favorite worlds that come to mind are um, the Nightmare Before Christmas Ooh, that was is good really good because mm -hmm. Kingdom Hearts has a good job of giving your characters costumes when you go to different worlds. So uh, when you go to the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, everybody's decked out in Halloween gear because, you know, oh, yeah. they're they're out 
fighting Heartless with uh, old Jack Skellington and fighting what what's his name Oogie Boogie. Yep, Oogie Boogie. Yep. What what a monster. But uh, yeah, so that that one's really good. I also like um, Beauty and the Beast just because you get to have the Beast in your party, which True. Lion King and Kingdom Hearts 2, that's probably one of my favorite that's worlds as well because Sora turns into a lion, Goofy mm -hmm. is like a turtle, and Donald is, well, he's a, a duck or some kind of winged creature. There we go. But it's, it's a great time. You're just a, like a little lion cub just running all over the place. Yeah. And so yeah, um, what what have you? Are you planning on picking this game up? Have you? Yeah, yeah. I I I want to get back into the. Uh, I want to get back into one and two. Make sure, not not to make sure, but to yeah. to really Just to really catch to up. have them like like because they're, they're both of them are on PS4. So yeah. I'm like I want to get that, and then you know get this. Obviously, this is top of my you know top of my list. I was hoping. That you know, Star Wars or Marvel were in oh, here yeah, because you know Disney owns them as well. I know they they, they threw in Pixar finally, you know, mm. with Monsters Incorporated. But you know, seeing seeing a Star Wars character or a Marvel character in this you know in mm. this series would have been you know icing on the cake. But I'm sure they're gonna make you know Kingdom Hearts four and Kingdom Hearts five. Like yeah, if I Disney know, wants uh, their money, they want you know they're gonna. From what I remember hearing a long while ago is this is just the end of this trilogy and it's. If you've if you've kept up with the story, you know Xehanort's the main big bad guy, and this is going to be the end of the trilogy with him. So we're going to get to see if another Kingdom Hearts game does come out again, whether it's after 13 years or not. Um, we'll think, get to see. I don't see. think they'll wait that long. <laughs> well, you, you know Disney know. likes that money, and they just they just kind of push out movies like. Uh, with the new uh, Spider-Man trailer, we we sure. didn't even know that Spider-Man exists after Infinity War. But, <laughs> yeah, he kind of uh, got snapped out of existence. Yeah, he didn't feel so good. He <laughs> he does not feel so good. No. I don't feel so good. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that people have kind of had qualms with over the years is the combat in this game. Uh, it's kind of button mashy, where you, all yeah. you got to do is press A, press X, or if you since it's on the Xbox it's now, thank Xbox. goodness, it's Finally. press A to win. Yeah. Uh, Andy, you might be able to hear me just kind of mashing away on my controller. Yeah, I can, I can hear it. It's, but um, yeah, it's in some games you just some games you just need that. Like yeah, it's it's mind-numbingly fun. Mm -hmm. It's not like the this is super repetitive kind of thing because mm -hmm. uh, throughout all the games you get new abilities pretty much, nice. and you can see like that where uh, climbing up the wall. Climb yeah, Sora. He he just has like anti-gravity shoes. He's like Michael Jackson now, where he just can kind of like. Walk up walls, so that's uh, really looks, neat. Looks like Goofy's got his and Goofy's shield. Goofy's shield can take you to new places because you gotta surf over the the molten lava that's attacking Thebes uh, because Hades does not like Hercules very much. Yeah, but yeah, it's it just it's happen. just a fantastic game. And oh, yeah. you know what else is fantastic? You coming out to help me show off this great new game, yeah. Andy. I want to thank you for coming in. Yeah, not a problem. And I would like to thank everybody else for tuning in and watching for. Project Delta and Gen 2. I've been Dalton Spees, and this was Andy. Thanks for watching.